Hi, this is Mark Rivera, music director for Ringo Starr and his all-star band, and you're listening to Things We Said Today with Ken Michaels and Steve Marinucci. Hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles program that is called Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show in which we focus on what's happening in the world of the Beatles, news-wise. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, and many of you know me for another Beatles program that I host called Every Little Thing, and I'm being joined by my co-host, the man who writes for Beatles Examiner, that being Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everyone, and what a week it, it is shaping up to be. Yeah, so much activity. It's tough to, to keep up with all of it. It really, it really is getting crazy. It's, it's, and, it, and we're, still, we're still a week and a half out from the, from the actual anniversary, the day we're taping this. So, I mean, it's, it's nuts. But, hey, it's also fun. What can I say? It's going to be interesting to see what happens after February 9th. Yeah. You know, there may be a real lull for a while. I don't mm-hmm. know. And actually, you know, there's just so much that's happened. I wouldn't mind a little breather. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, same same here. Absolutely. <laughs> I, um, I've been doing multiple stor- stories every day, and it's just getting it's getting crazier and crazier. But, hey, that's part of the fun of the, the thing, and that's the way it is. It's good to see the, the Beatles getting this much attention and, and you know, every so often there are something there's something that will cause the Beatles to get renewed attention, and this is obviously something that would have you know you could have predicted easily. But it's great to see it happening. So it, we go through cycles where the Beatles will get a lot of attention, immediate attention at, at some point for whatever reason, and this is one of those times. And it's 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 fun to see it. It's it, they you know they deserve it, and it's interesting actually that it keeps happening for a group. You know that's now that's been around for fifty years in America to keep getting so much attention. You know, at once to be worth that kind of attention, and that's you know that's one of the amazing things about you know the Beatles uh, themselves. So, what well, can you, say? you know, I agree, obviously, and it's great for all this attention being given to such a significant time. I just I'm not an anniversary driven person, as I've I've told you here on the show. Mm-hmm. I kind of wish that it would be like you know a constant thing. You know, yeah. not just February 7th through the 9th. What will happen the rest of 2014? Well, I think you can easily you can easily say that there will be a certain level of, you know, attention. I mean, they always get a certain level of attention, and I'm not talking about from the older fans. I'm talking about from people in general. I mean, you have the releases out there. You have all the all the CDs out there. I mean, they, they just... You know, they just added a whole bunch of CDs to the to the racks with the U.S. albums. Mm-hmm. It's just it's one of these things that it's just great to see these things happening. You know, and and um, so I'm I'm real happy that real happy that things are you know that uh, that they deserve this kind of attention that they they actually will get this kind of attention. They don't have to do any stupid media stunts or you know get arrested or anything else to to get this attention, it's because they are who they are. Right. And I think that's something that we, as fans, can be proud of. Not proud of as, you know, like they can be, but I think that's one of the the positive things about this experience, Mm. that they are that. That's what they are. So It's so amazing to think that, you know, Paul and Ringo don't even have to lift a finger. You know, there's, there's a life all to itself in the history and what what the public, what the media, what they build around it, which they do all by themselves without the Beatles' help. Well, and they also, I mean, they also do, I mean, they, they could retire today and not do another thing. Right. But we already know that, that Ringo's going to be touring this year. We already know, uh, you know, the, the you can guess that Paul will be out on the road again. Mm-hmm. And it's just crazy that, these guys are are so hard. They work so hard at their age. I mean, they're not young. These guys are, you know, they're both in their seventies, and they're still kicking butt. 
Well, it's, apparently they're very healthy for their age to be able yeah, to well, do. Yeah, that's part of it. And that variety interview with Ringo yeah. came out the other day, really kind of accentuated that as to his health regimen, that he's a vegetarian and he meditates and he he, exer- he works out, you know, um, and considering how he was at another point in his life, that's just astonishing that, that he has completely turned himself around. And Paul's always been somewhat of a, you know, of a health kind of healthy kind of guy. He's never right. really, although he's, you know, said that he's, you know, he went through periods where he drank and stuff. But I mean, even he has seen that, you know, that uh, at this point in his life, that if he wants to, you know, he, he needs to stay healthy, and he is. So that's um, and good for him. Yeah. Good for both of them. And, and by the way, that Variety article, which was wonderful, also mentioned that uh, Ringo has some 16 tracks that he's been working on for his next mm-hmm. album. So uh, that should be something that we see this year. It would be nice if it came out before his tour. Yeah, and it also mentioned, there were a couple of other things it mentioned, and I mentioned, I, I wrote about it uh, yesterday, uh, that there's a mono vinyl box, which they, which we already heard about. That's not, mm-hmm. not really news. The news, however, is that they're look they they're apparently looking into the possibility of more bootleg collections, which everybody kind of figured was possible, but they've actually they've actually said it in print that it's possible, not definite but possible. Mm-hmm. And the other thing which has also been rumored around is that they're going to reissue a Hard Day's Night on DVD, and the Criterion Collection, for those who don't know, put out these really really detailed DVD releases. I mean, we're not just talking, just putting out the movie on DVD. They gather uh, all sorts of outtakes and radio uh, radio spots and TV spots and things. We just got a hold of the, they just released um, a two-disc collection for It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, which is one of our favorite, my, I should say, my and my, my family's favorite movies. And they put out the collection with the Blu-ray is five DVDs <laughs> with radio spots, television spots, outtakes, two complete versions of the movie, including an extended version that has a bunch of uh, collected outtakes and lost sequences and things. And, and they do that kind of thing for everything. And they and uh, and they're it's really cool. You know, they're expensive. They're not cheap. And although in this particular case, the Mad Mad World one wasn't that expensive really and so if they do that with a hard day's night it's going to be astounding it's going to be well well worth seeing you know so okay and i would guess i'm just guessing here that they will restore the old stereo soundtrack that everybody grumbled when when miramax put out the the two disc set with the mono soundtrack that's just a guess though but we'll see what happens Uh, let's hope we can only hope and, you know, we, we did our show on our predictions mm-hmm. for 2014. All that was mentioned there, those three releases, haven't said anything about a video compilation. But if there is one, I mean, what a big year it would be. What a big year. Yeah. We did mention those, didn't we? Yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> but, How about that? But the Beatles haven't said anything about it yet, or well, Apple. Or, well, the Variety the Variety article is close. is pretty close to that, but... We'll see what happens anyway. Hmm. So anyway, our show today, we were going to talk about the Grammy Awards. Yeah, holy moly. Holy moly. Yeah, as, a, as an, a, I started, I mean, I wrote the first article about uh, Paul winning the, uh, the, the two awards for the, uh, in the pre-telecast, and I, was, I really wasn't expecting a whole lot of, uh, I was expecting a little bit of action that night. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting to write five stories, uh, and that's exactly what happened. I mean, I it was uh, I couldn't believe it. I mean, uh, he won the actually he won three Grammys in the in the pre telecast awards, and that was pretty that was significant. I mean, you knew the fact that he won three Grammys already that was pretty good, but then when he won the other two, and I really wasn't expecting the last one at all. It was I, it was. I mean, he even said that it's his best ever Grammy showing, and of course it is. But I mean, some of the people that he beat out were com- amazing. You know, I mean, he really, he really, 
He cleaned up. He cleaned up. He swept. <laughs> he swept it. He, he and and I was surprised how little media attention it got. And here's the, that's you know, very here's the guy, true. Yeah. And it wasn't even it wasn't even for the new album. I mean, we have the new album to look forward to next year, which I hope will get many nominations. Yeah, I hope so too. I hope so too. But we'll you know, and this was all for for two things or three things basically. He won for he won best best box or special limited edition package for Wings Over America. Now I got to tell you, he really deserved it for that. Yeah, and we both have talked about this before on past shows, and we both raved about how good that was, and we were pretty we were unanimous in the way and how good that was, and it took and it easily took best best box or. Uh, uh, special, special limited, limited edition limited package yeah, yeah. and um you know so that was that was pretty easy i mean i was not real surprised that he won that that was the one that i expected the most mhm but you know before you even talk about the other awards paul has been snubbed <laughs> so many times at the grammys there have been so many times when i thought he was going to win for something that which i truly believed he deserved to win mm-hmm. and didn't and so the Grammys have a history of doing this. You know, there have been a whole history of, of artists who have won Grammys for certain works of theirs where you wouldn't expect them to win. Right. Or you might say, well, that's certainly not his best album, and yet this one's winning, and you have to wonder what the reasoning is. He beat out the Rolling Stones. In this uh-huh. One. Um, he, that Brussels Affair is a great, is a, um, it's a vintage Rolling Stones concert with Mick Taylor, that had been bootlegged. And the bootleg was, I've heard the bootleg. The bootleg is fantastic. I mean, it was a great performance. And they reissued it and did it up in a deluxe fashion, but Wings Over America still beat it out. And um, When you think about all that they packed into the Wings Over America box set, though, come on. Mm-hmm. It's four oh, books no, I, in there. I, I mean, I'm not going to argue with you there. And the other thing, and I did not look this up, um, and I did not look up which to what extent it was, but he, he actually, he beat out the Smith tapes. And you know what the Smith tapes are? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, the Howard Smith box set had several interviews with John and Yoko in there, as well as a lot of other musicians, like Mick Jagger and Eric Clapton. Mm-hmm. So the yeah. other awards, the other awards that Paul won were for, well, there were two connected to Live Kisses. Right. He won for Best surround sound album which i'm not entirely that's an interesting nomination considering it wasn't released on cd <laughs> hmm. but i guess i guess because it's 5-1 you know you can they can it's eligible for that which is which is fine but it, it won for best music film which was that was a that was another kind of surprise but yeah i mean it 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 it, it got both of those awards and that was that was interesting that it that it won for that. Well, I think it was very well executed. The DVD. It was. It was very well executed. It was. A, it was well done. I, I have to be honest. I haven't. I haven't watched it recently. I'm going to have to watch it. Actually, um, I'm in it <laughs> at the very beginning. Which Steve, is, which, Steve is everywhere, folks. I'm. I know. I know. Yeah, I am. You, you have to blink and, and you miss me. But I'm in there for about maybe a half a second. Um, when they pan all the reporters behind from behind Paul, uh, I'm standing in that group of reporters there. That's when Paul was getting his walk, walk of fame. Of fame. Star. Yeah, which was that was the the live kisses was done the same day. It was done that evening, mm-hmm. whereas they, where the the walk of fame ceremony was in the afternoon. And um, but there we go. I mean that was that was you know that was interesting, uh, and and you know. It was it was good that he that he won that, um, and it was surprising that he got the you know he he I mean it was good that he won that. So there goes that. No, I'm glad to see you get that kind of an attention because mm-hmm. Kisses on the Bottom didn't win. No, last year, and yet Live Kisses does. Mm-hmm. But the I guess the surprise is that the that the Sound City work uh, got three that got the most Grammys. That took the bulk of the Grammys. And that was kind of a surprise to me. 
I wasn't expect. I was expecting maybe it would get one. I thought the documentary would get would probably win for best film because I've I've I, I, I haven't watched the whole thing, but I've watched a, a good part of it, and it's a great documentary. Hmm. And there's so much, and there's uh, there's a lot there, and it talks about you know how why everybody loved that studio and, and why everybody loved Sound City and stuff, and and so it's really a good documentary, but. I was surprised the song took best rock song. That I did not expect. Uh, I, I really didn't expect that at all. Yeah, I love the song, but when you think about it, and when uh, Dave Grohl spoke about it when, when receiving the award, mm-hmm. and Paul too, it was just something they jammed on for a couple of hours. It wasn't mm-hmm. like there was there was tremendous effort put behind the song. And when you think about all the other nominations that Paul's had through the years for th- for things he he's labored on, right? You know, and yet he gets an award for this. It, it's uh, it was not expected on my part. I'm glad he he won. Yeah, you know, I am too. And the band, and that, you know, and that was what that was the the one that enabled him to get the the sweep. That was the that was the last award was the was the uh, when cut me some flack one. Right. And yeah, that was just really surprising. I don't know. I'm I'm very happy about the whole situation. Oh, I am. It's just... I am too. I'm very. I am happy about that. Uh, I'm. I'm. You know. I'm really glad for him that that he came, that he came through. You know, and and won all those Grammys. And God knows the guy. You know, the guy deserves it. It was just, And then on top of that, to have perform with Ring, Ringo uh, at the end there, where they, you know, where they did uh, Queenie Eye. Uh-huh. Um, which was a, which was interesting in itself. I noticed Ringo kept looking over at Abe. During the, you know, like uh, he was trying to keep up with him or something. Uh, I, I don't know if they didn't rehearse for that or whatever. Well, but. you know, this was the big shock for me. Mm-hmm. The fact that they performed together at all. Because if you recall, Ringo made a statement. It was on Access Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And he said that he and Paul were not going to perform together on the Grammys. And, and they, yep, and I, I, I saw that statement, although I didn't. I didn't write about it, but the day before, there was the, Ken Ehrlich, the, per, the executive producer, kind of made a, a little clue that they were going to do it, and which I did pick up and write about, and sure enough, they did, um, and apparent and they apparently rehearsed, so so apparently there was a plan to perform, but yeah, it it was still they they kind of misled everybody, and they did they did it intentionally, and the. You know that nothing was going to happen. So, so you think that was intentional on Ringo's part? Yeah, I kind of do. Although, again, although with the with what I heard about the um, the February ninth special, that uh, Paul had to be convinced to do that. You know, it's very possible that they hadn't originally planned to do anything, and they decided to do it at the last minute. So it's it's certainly, hard, you know, it's hard to say. I don't know, you know, I don't know. Um, it comes across that way to me. That I mean, it, I, I love the performance of Queenie Eye, mm-hmm. and I understand what you're saying about Ringo looking up at Abe. He almost looked like he, he wasn't sure what to play, and I had right. the feeling that this was a last-minute decision That's, that yeah, was made. I'm, I'm, uh, last minute as far as, you know, obviously they had decided to do it ahead of time, but apparently they there wasn't a whole lot of rehearsal involved so how how you know how much time or how much advance notice there was to do this you know i don't know but it didn't appear to my eyes that there was all that much advance time yeah advance notice so if you watch the show mm-hmm. uh ringo performed photograph and then you know paul and ringo on queenie eye and to me that's what was decided from the very beginning that Ringo would do photograph and Paul would do Queenie Eye. It's just probably towards the end, at the last minute, Paul said, you know, everyone's expecting the two of them to perform together. You got to do something. And since they already had it made up that those were going to be the two songs, that's what Ringo played on. Mm-hmm. That's how it comes across to me. You know, are you are you pleased that Paul and Ringo did Queenie Eye and not a Beatles song? I understand why they did Queenie Eye. They were saving the Beatles song for the special. Uh huh. And that's, I think, probably the way it should have been. The way it should have been. Because I, I know understood I... that completely. I think. Uh, I think a lot of people. I, uh, there's probably a lot of people who said why did they didn't do Beatles songs, and 
had there not been the special coming the, the following night, that's probably what would have happened. But I don't know. It's interesting that they picked one of Paul's songs rather than one of Ringo's songs. They could have just as easily picked something from Ringo's catalog, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I and I think actually I probably it probably would have been better if they had. But why do you say that? Because I think some of the songs that Ringo did recently would have would have been better, and I think and I think his band would have adapted very easily to that. And I think you know, and Ringo probably would have been more comfortable. But I'm I'm just kind of guessing. I, I'm you know. I'm not understanding what you just said. Why would Ringo's material, his more recent material, be better than what Paul has chosen to do? Because Queenie Eyes a Queenie Eyes a, 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 an unusual song. I mean, I you know, I'm just I'm just kind of guessing. I mean, we don't know what the what the details were as far as why they picked Queenie. I I'm saying I'm thinking that you know a Ringo song would have probably been well, it would have been more comfortable for Ringo, mm-hmm. and you know the band would have picked up on it very easily. So it probably would have made for a better performance. That's what I'm saying, I guess. All right. Does that I mean does that make sense to you or do you agree with that? I don't think it matters either way. Okay. You know, to me, the Grammys have always been about the newest music that they're acknowledging as being the best of the year. Mm-hmm. And even when a veteran performs, usually nowadays, the way that they program the show, which is this has been going on for quite some time, they like to combine a veteran with a new artist and have them team up together. Right like Carol King did with Sarah Bareilles, or mm-hmm. um, Stevie Wonder with Daft Punk, and Nile Rodgers. And to, well, Nile Rodgers is a veteran, too. But, you know, you know what I'm saying. But it's usually, it's a combination of new music and old music, but even though the Beatles were given the award for Lifetime Achievement, you know, you've got Paul McCartney, who just released an album a few months ago. You've got Ringo, who chose to do Photograph, which is obviously a very a song he's very proud of, as well he should be. And it was also the perfect opportunity for him to plug his book. Mm-hmm. And they showed lots of photos from his book. But I think it was a wise choice overall. Okay. The thing is, you know, like you said, they knew that the February 9th show, the one that's going to be televised February 9th, was going to be all Beatles anyway, so save it for save the Beatles music for that show. So it didn't bother me in the least that they did solo music. So, um, no, I'm quite happy about it. The one thing that I do question, and it's something that we're not going to get an answer for. It's just one of those things that, unless somebody asks Paul or Ringo, we'll never know. Which is, number one, for a song like Photograph, why couldn't Paul just show up and play bass on it? Why can't Paul be on one of Ringo's songs? You know, Mm -hmm. one of his solo songs, as long as he's there in the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless of whether it's Photograph or even a Beatles song, why can't he play on his songs? And then with Queenie Eye, as a lot of people pointed out, friends of mine on Facebook, why can't Ringo be the only drummer? Mm -hmm. Why do you have to have Abe? And we don't know all the answers to that. You know, it could all just be in what the contracts say with the band. So Mm -hmm. I don't want to... uh, say anything that's based on pure speculation we don't really know the circumstances behind it you know it's another thing when a few years ago when it was Ringo's 70th birthday Mm -hmm. and Ringo had his own band there and Paul chose to do birthday and then he Mm -hmm. you know he played with Ringo's band then Mm -hmm. but for Ringo to play with Paul's band you've got to have Abe there yeah and and you don't I I don't know the full circumstances behind that. And no, people... and, and, and yeah, I mean we're just kind of speculating. So I mean, there's really nothing to we have nothing to go by. But yeah. And so does that mean that any time that Paul performs with his band and Ringo wants to join them, does it always have to be with Abe? You know, I don't know. I don't really know. So it's just something that I question, and a lot of people have questioned. I've noticed this a lot. Well, it's, on it, Facebook, I, I think the fact that this is a newer song, I think that was part of the. The issue. I think if it had been an older song, it wouldn't have been a pro- It wouldn't have been such a problem. Hmm. But you know, it's probably. I mean, how much exposure did Ringo have to Queenie Eye before before Sunday night? I don't uh, know. We don't know if he's listened to the album. How much we, he's right, listened exactly. to the album? That's that's my that's the point. That's the point. You know, so we don't know. But overall, you know, I was quite happy with the Grammy Awards. I mean, for Paul to sweep the way he did. And again, I'm going to go back to that comment that I made earlier about artists who 
don't get the awards when they deserve them and then also get them when they may not have deserved them as much. Mm -hmm. And you can just say, well, this is catching up on Paul's part. He's always deserved a lot of awards. I'm so glad for him. And then I look back at uh, the one thing that always sticks out in my memory, when I wanted Tug of War to win as best album and Toto 4 won. And that was like one time when I thought, well, this is a mistake here because Tug of War really deserved to win album of the year, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And Tug, uh, don't get me wrong, Toto 4 was a huge success. Marvelously produced. You know, it's a very good album, but I really thought the Tug of War deserved it. So there are times when Paul deserved to win and didn't. And in this case, yeah, I'm happy, especially for Wings Over America and for um, Live Kisses, because I thought that you know, the concert was phenomenal. And the way it was produced for the DVD, mixing the interview clips and showing the whole history of the Capitol building and all of that, I love that. You know, mm-hmm. I thought it was very well done. So in, in this case, I really thought that those, the Wings Over America and Live Kisses deserved it. You know, I, whether or not you think Cut Me Some Slack deserves it was up to you, really. Right. You know, that right. was the big surprise. And apart from all this, I really like the fact that, um, well, they do this every year anyway, but they always have that moment when they present a collage of the people that passed away in the past year. Mm-hmm. And they mention three people connected with the Beatles, who are very important, like Tony Sheridan Mm -hmm. and Hugh McCracken and Phil Ramone. Mm -hmm. So just the fact that, um, you know, those people were mentioned, as well as everybody else. It's a sad part of the show, but um, it's nice to to give all the credit to these people that deserve to be mentioned, you know, for their great contributions and to do that in the few minutes that they do it. Right. But... um, yeah, and then you've also got this other aspect of the show altogether, which is Yoko and Sean in the audience, mm-hmm. and to see them bopping to Queenie Eye, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I loved seeing, you know? How cool is that? And, and to a new song from Paul, to show their support of Paul's song there. And uh, also seeing Olivia in the audience, not that often, but she was there. And Yoko and Olivia, at the end of the show, they presented the award for Best Album of the Year. So they were represented, too, on stage. So I like that. And there's one other thing, and I just brought this up on my show the other day, but the thing about Queenie Eye and Paul and Ringo performing it, what is the last time you can recall two Beatles on stage performing live doing a song that's fairly new? No pun intended there with the word new. Yeah, no, I, I no, you're absolutely right. That's a that I, that did hit me as you know when I when I was uh, when I'd heard that they were doing Queenie Eye, I was, I, I was kind of surprised that 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 was the the song they chose. I mean, I understood, like I said, I understood why they chose the non beatles song. Mm-hmm. And he's been promoting Queenie Eye a lot, so you know it's not uh, it's. From that aspect, I mean, that's obviously a song he wants to push. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Why why they picked the new song it was kind of was kind of interesting. Um, I mean, as we were saying, he could have they could have easily picked an older song easily, right? Um, that and especially one that Ringo was probably a little more familiar with. But uh, Paul could have picked any song from his career, Beatles or or solo, right? Or Ringo could have picked a song. Again, I you know that the whole thing of letting Paul pick his song rather than Ringo picking his song. Mm-hmm. Um, although Ringo did get to perform his song, you know, with with cho- his chosen musicians. Right, and that was a great cast of musicians there. Mm-hmm. If you, you know, I, I have to I have to say, and I asked, I I I, I posed this question to his his uh, press office when they announced the tour, the Ringo tour this week. I was fully expecting because he had been showing up at the last couple of Ringo things that Peter Frampton would have been back with the group mm. and he was not and I was a little I was kind of surprised a little disappointed because I remember when he was with when he was with the band last time they were absolutely fantastic it's one of my favorite groups so when it, uh, you know Peter Frampton was in uh, a great version of the all-star band and I was really I was almost expecting that he was going to be back with them again, and I'm sorry that he's not. But hmm. um, it's good to see Frampton together with him, uh, with with him again, because anything that Frampton does is great. I was also thinking because we saw Frampton on stage with Steve Lukather. 
Mm-hmm. Those are two killer guitar players. Right. Can you imagine a band with those two? Yeah. <laughs> with Ringo? Yeah. I mean, that would have been, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't even think about that. Right. But, um, yeah, and uh, Don Was was in the band. Uh, Kenny Aronoff, great drummer. You, mm-hmm. you know I'm best for John Mellencamp, probably. Right. Um, you know, a superb band. But the, getting back to what I was saying about uh, Queenie Eye, the last time I can remember two Beatles doing a, a new song, or, or fairly new, together, live, you'd have to go back to the concert for Bangladesh. Mm-hmm. It's that long ago, because George and Ringo obviously were at the concert, and they were doing some of the music from All Things Must Pass, as well as the song Bangladesh, which at that point had been maybe a month since it's released as a single. Mm-hmm. So it's new material there with two of the Beatles performing it live. And you got, it's over 40 years since that's happened. Right. So think about how special this moment is with Queenie Eye. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's no question. Because they're very, tra- you know, they've gotten to be very traditionalists and, you know, uh, they don't normally... They won't normally do that stuff, but yeah, that was pretty amazing. So, hmm. so overall, I, I was thrilled with the Grammy Awards. Mm-hmm. You couldn't ask for more as far as the awards that Paul received. Nope, and uh, you know, the, uh, I, we won't even get into the night after yet uh, with the the taping of the special because we won't know about the February ninth show probably until a little closer to the time um, because there are things still developing. I mean, they've already had the taping of the tribute concert, and we just heard that that uh, David Letterman's going to interview Paul and Ringo. Uh, we don't know any details about that yet, at least uh, as, of, as of right now when we're talking. So. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know if it's going to be live at that moment or just pre-taped that day or right. pre-taped the week before. Right. We don't know if Paul and Ringo are going to be on late night with David Letterman still. Yeah, we don't we don't know... Given that that's a, uh, a special, an independent special on its own, it's going to be on Sunday night. I'm guessing this is all going to be taped, you know, in a independently. Um, they're going to do a, you know, maybe get the two of them in a in a studio and do it that way. That would be my that would be my guess. That would make perfect sense. But we don't know yet. So. Hmm. Okay. Well, that puts a wrap on this show. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can email us at uh, our address, which is things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. If you want to get in touch with Steve, tell him how. You can email me at beatlesexaminer at gmail.com. And I should mention that with the anniversary coming up, both Ken and I will be a little more visible than usual as far as various things, uh, various uh, out there things. Ken, you want to tell them about what you're going to be doing? Well, we had Charles Rosney on our mm-hmm. show here, uh, probably our last show, mm-hmm. and he has a whole series of events in New York City called NYC Beatles 50, also mm-hmm. NYC Fab 50, mm-hmm. and one of the events is at Town Hall mm-hmm. in New York City on Saturday uh, for a concert with a lot of different artists uh, through the decades, saluting the Beatles, performing Beatles music, including Tommy James and Melanie. Mm -hmm. who you just interviewed, I just interviewed her today, as a matter of fact. Uh, Also added to the list just the last few days, Al Jardine is going to be there, as well as uh, Melissa Manchester. That should be really cool. Yeah. That should be. And actually, and, you know, Charles and I were talking, and there's some names that I'm not going to mention on the air, but if you pull a couple, if you pull some connections from some of those names, you could get some interesting ideas of who else might show up, but I don't know that, honestly, I mean, we're just kind of, you know, throwing things out there. I mean, we're that's really getting to the rumor aspect of who might show up. But there's some interesting, if you want to stretch things a little bit as far as some of those people with uh, who's there, um, there could be some interesting people showing up. Mm, yeah. Also, uh, Marshall Crenshaw will be one of those artists. And, right. Uh, uh, right. Gene Cornish of the Rascals. But I will be one of the many MCs for that show. Mm-hmm. So if you come out, you can uh, certainly spot me and talk mm-hmm. to me. Uh, I'd love to meet as many of our listeners as possible. Mm-hmm. And also on the following day, on Sunday, I'll be at the Fest for Beatle Fans, and I'm going to be part of a panel discussion at 2.45 in the afternoon, which is supposed to be 
about the solo careers of the Beatles. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so either one of those two days, by all means, if, if you uh, have a chance, come and say hello. That should be, that should be fun. And yours truly, for people in, the, uh, in Northern California, I was interviewed yesterday by uh, KPIX Channel 5 in San Francisco, and they will do it. They're going to do a little thing on me that will air after the night they changed America on the 10 o'clock news. Uh, and it will also be on the Internet uh, after the interview airs. And uh, it, it was an interesting conversation. Uh, I won't give away what we talked about, but it, it, we talked about all sorts of different things. And uh, so that there, there you go. Um, get to see me and hear from me uh, in in live and in person, well, not live, but I mean in person rather than just over the air like this. Yeah, so, not only that, but I'm sure that Steve is going to post it online. I will, I, yeah, I will, I will do, I will definitely post something online. Which reminds me to uh, ask as many of you as possible to, to become a friend of ours on Facebook because mm-hmm. uh, we have our own page, which is Things We Said Today. Steve has his own page under Steve Marinucci, also mm-hmm. under Beetle News and Commentary, mm-hmm. and I have mine under Ken Michaels. And we're yeah we're we're all over Facebook, believe me. Uh huh. Probably more than more than we're there. Let's put it that way. Right. And also, I want to advise everybody to please go to my website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com, because. There's so much going on on the website these days. Every single week there's a trivia question, and I give away some great prizes. And I also have special contests that I run whenever I can. And uh, right now I'm in the middle of a contest where I'm giving away all 13 CDs of the uh, U.S. albums, of the American albums. And I just did an interview with Chad Stewart, as did you, Steve. Yeah. And um, you can read Steve's. Uh, article on Chad and Beatles Examiner. You can listen to my interview with Chad Stewart from Chad and Jeremy on my website. And plus, there's all these other interviews on my website. I also should point out that there's so many great people that are going to be at the Fest for Beatles fans, and many of those people I've interviewed, and you can hear the interviews on my website. From mm-hmm. Billy J. Kramer to Peter Asher, now Chad Stewart, Mark Lewison, Robert Rodriguez, David Bedford, all these Beatle authors. Alan Cozen just did a great interview with him, and he was on our show. Great guest. He's, he was on twice, actually, on our show. And uh, so you can listen to all these really good interviews with these people who uh, you can actually see in person at the Festival yep. Beatle Fans. So there we go. Did we plug enough? Uh, yeah, I think we did. <laughs> I think we definitely did. That was half our show right there. There we go. All right. So for Things We Said Today, I'm Ken Michaels, thanking each and every one of you for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying, keep celebrating that Beatles 50th, and we'll see you next time.